DaVinci Resolve 18 is here and with it, cloud collaboration. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to get uh, up and running and working in projects in the cloud, collaborating with people wherever you want in the world. And I do mean things you need to know. These aren't just helpful, tips. I've spent the last uh, day in change uh, banging my head against the wall figuring out some of this, thinking I was running into uh, issues or bugs or network problems. I wasn't, I just didn't know how it worked. So big shout out to the DaVinci Resolve user manual. Super useful, who knew? But I wanna simplify the process I went through uh, to help all of you out get up and running with this really cool new feature. We'll start pretty basic getting a cloud library uh, up and running, uh, but once we get into a software and actually start working with multiple users, it does uh, get uh, not complicated, but a little complicated. There are just some rules you need to know I'm gonna tell you all of them, let's get started. Now, you will actually start this process on the main Blackmagic Design website. And on every page on the website now, you have this login feature. If you click that, you'll be brought to a prompt to either create an account or log in, or if you are already logged in like me, you will be brought to this project server. And here, you see I already have one library here, Sterling Supply Company, and one project inside of that. If you create an account, which is free, and get to this page, you can always create a project library, and there you will need to choose your region, uh, choose the one closest to you and a project name, something like two. And if you go to create that library, then you will reach this prompt to pay that $5 a month. And this is really important. I had someone ask about this in a uh, previous video where I very quickly covered this. This $5 a month is for a library and a library can host any number of projects and timelines and all of that within it. So really the reason you would have multiple cloud libraries uh, is to control access of different people you might be working with. Because when you invite someone to your library, they have access to everything inside of it. But I'm going to cancel because I already have one up and running. And here you see I have the library and my one project inside of it. And now if I click over to uh, Resolve and open up my uh, project manager here, you see in 18, this is where I had my local database, but now I have this option over here to jump to cloud. I will click that. Again, if you haven't done this before, you will have a login prompt here, which you just use the uh, same credentials you created on the Blackmagic website. And that will show you here, I have this uh, cloud library I created. And on this little I for details next to it, here you have some relevant options, uh, including the current members of that server. And if you just click this share, then you can paste or type in the email addresses of anyone else with a Blackmagic ID and it will send them an invitation. And if they click a link there, they will be added to this project. And when they load up Resolve, uh, they will see your cloud library ready to jump in. We're gonna show that off soon, but I'm gonna click cancel, close out of this info. And here you see I have this first collab tests project. I'll double click that and we will get up and running. Now I have a few things here. I, I was tossing in a whole bunch of stuff. So I mostly have like different graphics options I was testing out. Here I have my plugin Proto. A uh, quick side note for something like Proto. This was created in Fusion, but with a third party Fuse. And for stuff like that, it's functionally treated uh, like a source clip might be, which we're gonna touch on later. So if anyone else has Proto already installed on their system, they'll be able to see this. Uh, but if anyone doesn't, uh, they might get an error or just see nothing here because the entire effect won't render. But this is pretty cool. And it's just like a normal project. You see, I have a few bins here. Uh, in bin three, I have a blank timeline for Halo. So what I'm going to do here is actually, uh, I have a folder I've created for this video and inside I have footage and that Halo clip. I can drag that in just like a normal project, drag that down to the timeline. Great, and do some real quick cuts, cuts, cuts. And hey, I'm a video editor. Now to the fun part, cloud collaboration. I'm about to jump over to my laptop that I have here as well, but there is one important setting you need to know about first. And that is if you come up to file and down to either single user project or multiple user collaboration. This timeline is hosted on my cloud library now, but it is still a single user project. Only one person could load it up at a time and make any changes, which is still pretty useful. If you don't need the features of multiple user collaboration, you can keep it as a single user project, uh, have someone jump in, edit all they want, and then they are done, they leave, and someone else comes in and either keeps editing or reviews. That can be really powerful, but what we want is multiple user collaboration. I'm gonna click that, 
It'll do its thing, think about it, change it over. And you see stuff one way, but that is because it needs me to select a timeline to be active in. I'm gonna go back to that main timeline. It will load up. And the only visual differences currently will be now you have these two little icons down here for current members and a chat that we're gonna see some of later. But let's hop over, because right now this is on my Windows desktop, but right here, I have a uh, M1 MacBook Air. And as you can see, I am there on that uh, cloud page of my project manager. And one thing I need to do, I don't know if it's essential, but I'm gonna do to show it off. Uh, Siri, you have these collab tests project, and we are going to uh, click this refresh button, and you'll see a new icon pop up on that uh, collab test project. And that is this little group of people here. And that means that that switch for a multi-user collaboration has been enabled. So I can double click on that and I have that same prompt to select a timeline and I can go to that main timeline. And now we are here. I am in this project on two different computers. Um, I am on the same local network. This laptop is on Wi-Fi, uh, but everything I'm doing is still running through that central server. So this would be the experience you would have if you are connected really anywhere in the world. So let me show off some stuff. You can see on this laptop, I have uh, this little tag here. You will see these tags. If anyone else is in the project, you'll see what bins they have open and what timelines they are working on. And we're gonna circle back to this, but it's very important. This isn't just information for information's sake. I am seeing this because right now my desktop um, is sort of the owner of these bins and these timelines. Let me demonstrate by coming over to that halo composition here on my desktop. And if I navigate to that, you'll see um, that this footage is already in here. Um, that isn't magic. That is because I did set this up earlier. I thought I would have to go through that same process, but here's what you need to know. Um, this clip, is local on both computers. I have this clip on my desktop and a copy of that clip on the laptop. And the only thing you need to know about that, um, if I actually go to where those are located, you remember I had that uh, YouTube 113 and then a footage folder, you need to recreate that same folder structure on multiple computers. It does assume you're going off of a service like uh, Dropbox right now, and I know they're gonna add Google Cloud and other things. So it does kind of assume uh, you will work off of something that is being synced, so it is the same structure. But if you do this all manually, you just have to have um, a, a little bit more built out structures. Like if you just have this um, on a folder somewhere in documents, and then on the other computer, you have a on a folder somewhere in like the normal video files, that won't work. You need to have a dedicated area. And that area has to just have the same uh, named files. But what's really cool um, is that now this is working. And if I uh, go back on my desktop, check out collaboration, you see you have me and also Patrick, and it does show you uh, that here I am connected between a Mac and a PC in one project online. It's pretty cool. But let's talk about permissions, right? I first opened uh, this timeline on my desktop and I can go on and uh, edit this just like a normal clip, right? And if we just make some changes and go over to the laptop, you'll see that after like a few seconds, we get this refresh area here and that is a black refresh area but if I just click that refresh, it will uh, copy over those changes and we're good to go. But on my laptop, I cannot make any of those changes. I can't cut this footage. I can't move it around. Uh, and that is because my desktop is the current owner of this timeline and really the owner of the entire bin. I can copy this timeline, paste in a halo copy um, that will refresh on the laptop. And even though I am staying in this first timeline, if I come over to the Halo copy on my laptop, I also can't change a thing. But, or unless, if I take that Halo, copy it, come to this first bin, paste it in there. Now, if I am on my laptop, I refresh that, come to that first bin, I have this secondary Halo timeline. Now this is a project I can not do anything on right now uh, because I selected that here on my desktop. It's not just timelines. When you open a timeline, it looks at the bin that timeline is in and only one person can be the primary 
editor for an entire bin at a time. So you just have to be organized and know uh, what roles different people are filling. But now that that's done on this Halo timeline, I will be the only person in here and I can edit this timeline just like normal. I can clip stuff, I can move it around, I can do all sorts of stuff. And now back on my desktop, I have that little arrow uh, to refresh as well. I can click that. And if I were to open that timeline here, um, I would see those changes. And now on my desktop, I can't change anything with that source footage. Uh, interesting complications coming up, so stay tuned. But this is really cool. I can select my original Halo timeline. I can come to that duplicate we put in a different bin, right click and go to compare with current timeline. And that will give you uh, this breakout. If we zoom down, we can see where I changed and stretched those clips. Uh, this could get wild if you're in a complicated project, but if you need two people editing at the same time, this is how you could uh, do it. Just give each person their own bin. It will connect to the footage vine. And then this is how you would like rectify any changes or consolidate those into one. And really this one would just tell you, I, I believe uh, this is something I recently discovered, um, just like which, which option you then wanna go with, but this would give you a nice overview of that. So one person can only own a bin and a timeline at the same time, kind of, <laughs> but you do have more control over that. It isn't just completely first come first serve uh, because here back on this Halo timeline, I am the editor here and my laptop cannot make any of those changes. But if I am the owner, I can right click on that timeline and go to timelines, unlock timeline. That sort of lets go of your ownership of the timeline, but now immediately I can't make any changes, but if I am on my laptop, I can right click again, go to timelines, lock timeline, claim that ownership, and now without leaving the timeline, without doing any funky, uh, now this laptop has editing privileges. And this is something you could very easily sort out uh, in the chat as well. Hi. Hello. But let's talk about our cool stuff. I'm going back to my main timeline on both computers. My desktop will be the main owner of this timeline. So here we have a standard text effect, not text plus, just text. And here we can change this however we want. And no surprise if I go to that timeline uh, text effect uh, on my laptop, uh, all the controls are grayed out. But this is interesting because this is, is the real power of the current system. When one person is the primary editor on a timeline, anyone else coming into that timeline can make changes on the color page and the fusion page. And that includes fusion effects that you have control over on the edit page. So this standard text effect, the controls for that were kind of just like footage. Like if you can change footage, you can change this default text effect. But if I grab the text plus effect, come to my end of my timeline, uh, it might need a second to give you that control, but you can type in hi, hi, hi. And as soon as I click out of that on my laptop, I will be given an option to uh, refresh as well. And then that new text plus effect will come in. But if I mouse over or select that clip, I have full control to change this because it is changing uh, the fusion composition underlying this. So I can just type, howdy. And now um, we see an icon we haven't seen before. If you are the primary editor and someone makes a fusion or color change on your timeline, you will get this bright yellow notifier um, and it won't change anything unless you click it oh, or mouse over it probably. <laughs> And then uh, it synced that change. It also would have done that if you just clicked the refresh. So this is an interesting area if you have multiple of these effects. Uh, and for fusion effects like this, um, it is less important who is the timeline owner, uh, but still only one person can have control um, of those individual effects. So if my desktop changes its movement rate or you know any general stuff like the color, I would then have to click off to some other clip. And on my desktop, you actually have to select another clip then that unlocks over on a laptop to, yeah, that took a little second, uh, but now here on my laptop, I can change any of those same controls. Um, change the color back to something like a wicked green and then back on my desktop because it's now the primary one. Um, I have that yellow one. I can refresh that and that just affected this contours clip. And the exact same way that works 
Um, it works also dedicated in the Fusion page and the color page. So if I go back to my main Halo timeline, make sure my desktop is the owner here, and then I can view that. Actually, let me, I'm gonna give up that ownership take ownership on my laptop. So now I cannot edit any of these clips, right? But I could take this uh, one clip here and hop into the color page and uh, make any changes I want. I can make it look pretty bad. Oh yeah, pretty bad. And if I uh, just clicked or maybe hopped over to another clip, I would get that same notification on my laptop to copy over. Remember, because it is yellow, that means um, you are still the primary editor, but someone updated either Fusion or the color page, and now that wild color grade is here on my laptop as well. And it is the same for Fusion. If I hop on that third clip now and toss in something like a dedicated text node and say, subscribe, then I can just play over, and if I go to that clip, on my laptop now. I might need to click off as well if I go back to that second. Yeah, yeah. Then I can refresh that. Um, and now that you see that subscribe, but that's not a uh, title on the edit page. That is something done in the Fusion page. That could have been any crazy complicated like Fusion effect or tracking or manipulation. Um, and it would have just updated. So if you have a big timeline and someone is coming into color or do visual effects, you can be actively working on the edit page and moving things around, shuffling, trimming, um, and someone else can be in the color page or the fusion page working away. And when they're done, you'll just get a notification to update. And if you wanna keep things uh, very safe, you can always uh, duplicate your main timeline into another timeline and copy stuff over or just jump to that one. You have tons of options. And a uh, really important note, because they made note of it in their announcement, if I come back to this uh, collab uh, test in my uh, project manager, I can always right click on that and uh, export or save the entire project locally. If I have collaborators coming to do something, I can just move this back to my local library and stop paying that $5 a month if I want it. All right, I think I covered everything I needed to or why I wanted to. I covered the pain points I ran into. Here, for most people at least, maybe more important than anything, uh, are your bins in the media pool. Only one person can be the primary editor or owner of a bin and all the timelines within it. So you just have to build your project around knowing that structure and that those rules. If you have a project where you want people working on different scenes or in different timelines for any reason, they just need to be in different bins. And it's very easy to uh, unlock a timeline at any time and another user can instantly uh, scoop it up and be the primary editor. But if you're not the primary editor, uh, you can still work on the fusion page and the color page and uh, that important note that does include uh, changing fusion effects on the edit page. Uh, but again, only the controls within it. I can't extend it or do anything else like that. And also only one person at a time, even for stuff like this. It makes sense that all these rules are to just keep things sane and not have people uh, overriding each other's works all the time. So it's just important. You just need to um, have a sort of professional folder structure and you should be pretty good to go. I am in Resolve Studio here, uh, but cloud collaboration is available to all in the free version as well. As long as one person is playing to uh, host that, that $5 a month, uh, currently up to 10 people uh, can be uh, collaborators linked to that file. Uh, I'm not sure if that's just a beta thing as in even uh, their example in the live stream. Uh, they had 12 like plus grant. So I wouldn't be surprised if that changed, but for right now, uh, you can invite up to 10 people uh, to collaborate in your project. Go make something cool with someone on the other side of the world. <laughs>